Welcome back to another episode with the Inquisitive Mamba. You had found me. I am home. I am in my home studio. I have a special guest joining today's show. Her name is Aaliyah Funchell. Aaliyah is a FC Bayern intern. She worked with the Oklahoma City Thunder for last NBA season, and uh, we are uh, eager and thrilled to have her join the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. I'm super excited. Likewise. So uh, let's get into it a little bit before we, uh, you know, ask, ask a few questions about, you know, the NBA and all that stuff. So have you been watching the Olympics lately? I have. We have it on in the background at work. Um, I actually just moved, so I don't even have a TV or anything, but we play it at work. Um, I have a friend from Wichita that played for the Olympic softball team, Team USA, and they got um, silver. So I watched that, but I've been trying to keep up. I just don't keep up like religiously. Of course. So I have to ask you, did you watch uh, last night's game? I know it was like USA versus uh, Australia. I did not watch it. We watched some of like the replay, but we, I did not get a chance to watch it last night. Okay. So it was a pretty good game uh, for the most part. USA was actually down 15 at one point and they ended up coming back and winning that game, obviously. And now they go on to face uh, France uh, Saturday for the, uh, for the gold medal. So I have to ask you, who do you have winning uh, USA or France, because USA lost the first game when they played in the beginning of the start of the Olympics. Yeah, I, I have to go with USA. I mean, like, I felt like losing was kind of a fluke. I just felt like no one, you know, like, that's very unlike Team USA. So I feel right. like they kind of got that out of the way. Maybe it was the jitters. Maybe it was the COVID protocol. So I feel like whatever it was that made them lose that first game, I just feel like that's over and done with and now they're like okay we have winning on our minds so i'm with team usa i'm i'm going to agree with you on that i think usa is going to win i don't see them losing to france i think like you said it was a fluke game some of the guys were just you know coming together and uh, a lot of chemistry issues there you know with covid and some players coming from the nba finals and hey thank god for uh, kevin durant leading the uh, way and uh, being the leader all time in uh, points for uh, for usa basketball do you think uh, do you think Durant is the best all time USA Olympian uh, basketball player we've ever seen or you know had uh, now that he's uh, number one in the uh, in the all time uh, scoring list for the for for basketball? Yeah, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't agree with me, but I really think he is. Um, he he just like he knows how to be a clutch player when they need him to be clutch, but he also plays really good team basketball. So. Um, Despite, I know people have a lot of different opinions about KD, but when they need him the most, he shows up and he's very good at keeping his composure. And I, I really think that he shines and that he is. And he actually played for uh, the Thunder, it feels like so long ago, a team that you covered uh, last uh, last NBA season. So I have to ask you, um, what was it like covering the uh, covering the Oklahoma City Thunder last year with, you know, a crazy year 2020 into 2021 with the uh with the pandemic that we're still in so take take us uh, through that experience yeah well I've um so I'm originally from Wichita I'm living in New York City right now for grad school but um Wichita and Wichita State specifically already had a really close relationship with the Oklahoma City Thunder so I covered their games a lot like back when Russ was there and um especially when they would play the Knicks because Ron Baker played for Wichita State so that was kind of my in so I was always like, whenever I was there, I was there as a journalist, but now this last season I was a Thunder ambassador. So I kind of got to see the different side of everything that they do. And that was super cool. Definitely learned a lot about what it takes to kind of make, so the Thunder have like one of the best family environments in basketball. Um, and I think it's just because they do so many amazing things for the game, especially when their teams might not be winning a lot, you know? So um, yeah. <laughs> they had to find like other ways to keep that family environment digitally. So I, I definitely learned a lot about that, like whether it's social media or different things they can do to make the fans feel connected. So it, it was really cool, like seeing that. Um, and then the team itself, I mean, obviously nothing, nothing too special, but they do have a bright future. So I'm super excited about that. So obviously, I don't know, I'm, I'm sure you saw in the uh, in the NBA news recently, Kemba Walker was bought out by the Oklahoma City Thunder, signing with the, the New York Knicks, a team that he's always wanted to play for. He's actually from New York City, where you're in right now. I think he's from, I think he's in the, you know, from the Bronx area. But were you surprised when they uh, when they decided to uh, go with a buyout uh, with uh, Kemba Walker? 
honestly, no, because the Thunder are just so focused on what's to be instead of, I guess, the present moment, which isn't bad at all. I mean, they have like this whole rebuild mindset and young team. So I, I honestly wasn't surprised knowing their history of um, just wanting to have those first round draft picks and wanting to kind of build something new and young. So it, it kind of didn't like phase me. Um, very happy for Tampa though, because I mean, playing for the Knicks, crazy. Yeah, absolutely. And now the Knicks just recently signed Julius Randle to a four year, $117 million deal. Uh, so the Knicks, the Knicks get their star. They have him, Kemba, uh, and some other guys as well. Mitchell Robinson comes back from injury. So the, and Derek Rose actually re-signed from, with a three-year, $43 million deal. So that'll be pretty interesting. They got knocked out in the uh, in the first round of the playoffs this past season. It feels so long ago, but they lost 4-1 to one to the Atlanta Hawks. Knicks fans are pretty excited about their uh, about the future with them. They've got some young studs coming up there. Like I said, they got D. Rose. Obviously, he's you know a good veteran. Uh, Randall's now a veteran. Um, Mitchell Robinson's a, re- a good rim protector as well. Um, Kevin Knox, I don't know what happened to him. Uh, RJ Barrett's a rising star. If he can uh, figure it out from the three-point line, which he was, you know, late towards the end of the year. Great coach in uh, Tom Thibodeau. But moving on from the NBA, we'll be back to that in a little bit. I want to ask you, um, how is it like working for uh, FC Bayern? And uh, take us through a little bit of that experience and maybe some of your most uh, memorable experiences so far working with them. Yeah, it's definitely been way out of my comfort zone. Um, And that's what I intended. So I am a big basketball person, especially like at the college level. I went to Wichita State for undergrad. And I don't know if you know much about like division one basketball, but they were a powerhouse for quite a while. And yeah, so that was like the thing to do. So I've been a basketball person, college hoops, like um, and then Wichita also doesn't have any major league sports. So then working with the Thunder, I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. But then FC Bayern, I first of all, didn't think I was going to get the job. But then the (laughs) fact that it's um, such a global thing, it it just blows my mind. Like I'm publishing articles that are published in multiple different languages. And, you know, I'm finding the USA version and I'm working every day with like the people that are in Germany. We have, you know, people in China, wherever it may be. And so that's been really cool. And then just soccer itself. Um, I never, I played soccer like two years in high school because I was good at basketball and they needed a goalie. Um, But my little brother got me into soccer, but I've never really been a super fan of international, like professional soccer. So that it's kind of just been mind blowing that like everything has opened my eyes to. Um, But my favorite part so far has been, so we had, um, a piece of content that just came out. It was like a long form video, like 10 minutes. And I love that kind of stuff, like content like that. And I actually helped come up with the idea and it was with our influencers, which happened to be um, Ronnie Stanley from the Ravens, George Hill, and then um, Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, So he's one of the new NFL players. I think he's with the Lions. So um, we got to talk to them on zoom and then we also had two of our players playing this little game it was called guess what's next we came up with that idea so we would show them a clip um of like a funny fc Bayern um video and then we'd pause it and we'd have them guess what happens next so that was like the coolest thing ever because i got to be a part of it from start to finish so that's been my favorite part i think uh, i think you've uh, experienced uh, a whole lot of uh, awesomeness with fc Bayern so far george hill Ronnie Stanley and uh, Amar St. Brown. Uh, yeah. George Hill actually just recently signed with the Bucks again. Uh, Ronnie Stanley is on the Ravens, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. No. He uh, and uh, Amar St. Brown's brother Ikenumius was uh, drafted by or drafted by the Packers. Packers. They've uh, they have a big family of football football uh, wow. football players there. So um, as of uh, that's pretty cool if you ask me. Um, FC Bayern right now. Um, so you honestly had no clue that you were even going to uh, get this job, right? <laughs> Or internship. No, and like I make a lot of TikToks about like yeah. job searching, and I have so many internet friends because I love Twitter and like I love connecting people. So definitely like my connections via the internet helped because like um, my boss Richie, or he's like my direct supervisor. Um, I knew him, and I would talk to him about TikTok. He would I'd give him advice, and then he'd give me advice about like the job searches for internships. So um, I guess that just like shows how valuable the internet and networking can be but I had no idea I was not expecting to get the job 
Right. So obviously um, you've worked with Oklahoma City Thunder, FC Bayern. There's one thing that I actually just thought of now that you were saying TikTok. Um, I saw your TikTok uh, like a couple of months ago, I think, and you were talking about the Oklahoma City Thunder and you were like asking uh, like how or you were telling people how to become an ambassador, how you became an ambassador. And just recently I reached out to you, you know, via Instagram and that's how I found you. But this was like a few months back. I was like, I don't know if she'll ever respond, you know, who knows, but here we are on this podcast, you know, talking about sports and something that, you know, you love uh, doing, obviously I love uh, talking about it as well, but I just wanted the people to know that that's, you know, kind of how I, uh, how I discovered you. <laughs> Yeah. And then I looked at your content and it's so good. And I already feel like I know you because I watched your content. So I, uh, that's just what's cool about the internet. I love TikTok. Honestly, I'm all over the place though with it. Like I love posting sports content. I love dancing. I love acting videos. I, I like to, you know, give a wide variety. I think it's more fun to obviously, yeah. you know, obviously everyone likes to stay in their niche, but I really like to just, you know, give every, give everyone uh, a chance of uh, everything that I, you know, want can show more, more or less, but, uh, but yeah, no. Yeah. So Obviously, um, you worked for FC Bayern, Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, after FC Bayern, what are your plans for the fall? So I'm currently at Columbia University. I am um, doing sports management grad school there. And just being in New York City is huge for me. I've already like made a lot of connections. So there's a lot of like companies that I want to collab with or like companies that have reached out that want to do like maybe interviews. And then I'll also be working with Columbia Athletics, kind of like doing reporting and they also have like a deal with ESPN so I might be doing some like sideline stuff or commentary who knows um I, wow. I don't know with that but um kind of just like seeing where it takes me because as much as I do love working for companies I also love building my personal brand so I'm always out and about meeting new people um getting content so that's kind of like what I want to do is just capitalize on being in New York City and everyone I can meet no, that's awesome. You're definitely, uh, you're definitely capitalizing on your opportunities. Um, and, and now that the, uh, now that New York city is fully open, I know that they, uh, just, they're making it, you know, a mandate for certain places to be vaccinated and, you know, all that stuff, but that's pretty cool that you're getting the opportunity to, uh, you know, be at Columbia and be in the grad, grad program and have the opportunity to, you know, work with brands and, uh, reach out. Like you said, the internet, you never know who you will, will meet or have the ability or the chance to talk to, you know? Yeah. So uh, do you think the MB the, do you think the Milwaukee Bucks can repeat next year? Obviously they just won the uh, recent 2021 NBA championship. Um, you know, I feel they're definitely going to be a contender, but I really think the Nets have unfinished business. They're my front runner. Um, I really think that, you know, it Giannis is amazing and I love him to death and I'm so happy for him, but he pulled off like some great performances that saved them. I feel like they just need to build a stronger team, which sounds silly to say because they just won. Right. But I can't see them being like this powerhouse, like number one powerhouse that everyone Absolutely. needs to defeat, if that makes sense. Yeah. And the thing about them too, is they're a really small market compared as well as Phoenix was too. So, and I think it was a down year. The Lakers were hurt. The Nets actually, you know, they lost to the Bucks, but they weren't fully healthy as well. Kyrie and yeah. Katie weren't, or, excuse me, Kyrie and Harden weren't fully healthy. So it's tough to say, um, I don't think Milwaukee could repeat again. Um, obviously, you know, they did win. So they do have the target on their back of, uh, being the, uh, favorite to win it again. Um, I do have another question for you. Um, Moving back to soccer real quick, I know obviously you're interning with FC Bayern. Did you see that um, Lionel Messi is not going to be returning to Barcelona? Yeah, um, <laughs> it was a crazy day in the office <laughs> today with that news because we literally were like, okay, we don't like, because I work in content for them. It's right. like, okay, we, we don't really need to plan any other content because all, our, all of our mentions were like, announce Messi, announce Messi as if we're going to target him and like right, sign him. Right. So like yeah. everything we were posting, it just revolved around him. So it's like, what's the point? So um, we were kind of thinking like, oh, should we do like something just to play into it? But we decided not to, obviously, like we had to keep it professional. But yeah, that was crazy, crazy news. So where do you think he'll go, obviously? Because, you know, the transfer portal in soccer is crazy. And I'm not a huge soccer fan. Um, I really don't follow it like that. Obviously, I know FC Byron's really good. Um, PSG is really good. Yeah. Um, there, there's just, you know, they, they got the, uh, select few clubs that are really good as well. Where do you think he lands? I've seen, he's been linked to uh PSG Neymar wants him to play there. I don't really yeah. know where, where he'll go. Where do you think he'll go? I, I agree with you PSG. Um, especially because 
I'm in an office full of these soccer, just like bleed, eat, like yeah. everything <laughs> soccer. And they were saying PSG. So I'm like, okay, yeah, like I can see that. Um, it's, yeah. it's just crazy. Like, I mean, soccer, like the reach that they have, it just blows my mind how like this one player, obviously like one of the best in the world, but like can shake up an entire day like he, he did today. It was crazy. Absolutely. So it's funny because, you know, qu- quickly staying on the soccer, uh, this, this messy trend real quick, Ronaldo was linked to PSG a few weeks ago, and that would be such a slap in the face to Ronaldo. If Messi were to go there instead, imagine that if that were to happen, because it looks like, you know, Ronaldo was on his way out of Juventus. Uh, he could have gone back to Real Madrid if he wanted to. Real Madrid ended up losing Sergio Ramos, who's one of the best defenders in the world. There's a lot of soccer guys out there, but if Messi goes to PSG, you know how much that'll shake up. You all have him. Neymar and Mbappe. Wow. Woo. Watch sounds out for a lot the- like what the Lakers are it's trying so- to do. <laughs> so- it sounds like it sounds like a super team is just waiting to yeah. happen. So but anyways, yeah, um crazy. who do you who do you have winning rookie of the year in the NBA this upcoming Ooh. season? Okay. Um I feel like it would be really basic to say Cade Cunningham. I love um Jalen Green. I would mm-hmm. then instead of like going the basic route, let's go Jalen Green. You think you so you're gonna go with Jalen Green winning uh, sure. r- rookie of the year? Okay, that's yeah. that's fair. Um, I have to. I, add, I don't know. Like, I feel right. like the first round picks have been like kind of not sleepers. I mean, they're amazing, right, right. but it's at the same time, it's like everyone would probably say Kate Cunningham. So I really, really like Davion Mitchell out of Baylor. I think he's a. I think he's an animal. He's a great defender. You know, he's super scrappy. He's not the greatest shooter, but I think uh, I think he'll change. I think he'll tr- do his best to change that. Uh, that King's uh, dynamic around because they're a mess, obviously, hopefully <laughs> that they're just, they're just a uh, dumpster fire waiting to happen. So yeah. what do you, what do you think about these, uh, these NBA big threes that are just, they're just throwing around this NBA big three term, like left and right. And I'm just like, you can't just do that. Like the Nets have a big three, the Lakers have a big three, the Bucks have a big three. Um, I mean, who else has a big, the Bulls have a big three. Miami has a big three. So what do you yeah, think I, about that that term? They're just kind of throwing it around. I, I have to agree with that um, because like big three to me would be like top five players in the NBA. Like Absolutely. if you have those three. So maybe I could see you doing, of course, the Nets would make sense because that big three. Okay. Yeah. And then anyone right. that's with LeBron, anyone like of a certain degree that's with LeBron would make a big three, you know? But to just throw it around so loosely, it's okay. What about the other two players on the court? Like, right, you know what right. I mean? It's that, like, especially if the other two players are maybe outscoring or out rebounding one of the people in the big three. So I, I do think it's getting thrown around way too much. I think so too. And um, I'm, I'm sure you just saw recently, I think it was yesterday, Oladipo actually went and re signed with the Heat. So now you have him, Adebayo, Lowry. Butler, Duncan Robinson resigned, and hope they're hoping Tyler Hero will uh, will come back to life and not have a uh, he had that sophomore slump season last year. Goran Dragic, Goran Dragic is out. I'm not sure who's going to sign him, um, but I have to ask you, what are your thoughts on the uh, on the whole Ben Simmons uh, situation with Philadelphia? Because I read a report that he's not speaking with uh, Philadelphia. It's only his agent, which his agent is Rich Paul. So the communication line is off with Ben Simmons. There's no phone calls being made between him and the organization. They just recently signed Andre Drummond uh Embiid is obviously still there and they're trying to move Ben Simmons with to Golden State but Golden State said absolutely not for the uh trade that they offered them so do you think he gets moved before midseason or do you think um he stays put see I wish I knew what was going on internally but I feel like if he wants out badly he'll be out pretty soon um and I hate to like make any assumptions about teams but I do know like the 76ers it's not all like sunshine and rainbows over there like they they definitely like it's there's a lot going on and I feel like the chemistry is not there and if they're already sensing that this early then I I think they'll try to get them out but I they just need to propose like a better trades and better deals I absolutely agree with you. I think it's time to just move on from the, the Embiid uh, Simmons, you know, era and just kind of just close that chapter because you had, you had um, Brett Brown there for years. Now you have doc rivers there and they, they blame Brett Brown for, you know, his, his mess. 
uh, Markel Fultz, that whole situation. Now Doc Rivers is there. They blamed him. They blamed Doc Rivers for the Clippers 3-1 loss last year. I mean, his Doc Rivers record alone, I don't even want to get into Doc Rivers, but I think Ben Simmons will be moved. I absolutely agree with you. I'm just interested to see what team will end up, uh, you know, taking a stab on him, you know? Yeah, that's definitely interesting. I, I'm curious to see that as well. So um, do you, th- yeah, do you think the Sixers will trade Simmons? Obviously, yes, you think they will. I agree with that. And then um, Lou Williams returned to the Hawks on a one-year $5 million deal. John Collins re-signed with the Hawks as well. Um, there was some issues between uh, Young and Collins in the, uh, mid-season when they had that whole coaching change. Uh, do you think Atlanta is a threat in the East for this upcoming season, or do you think that was just a one-year wonder with them? This may be a hot take, but Trey Young is a threat. Um, yeah, I covered I covered him in college because OU played Wichita State. Mm-hmm. Side note: one of the kindest athletes I've ever covered, and like we would, he reads my DMs still because like, wow. Um, I don't know if you know Instagram, but like if you accept a message request, then like you no longer get filtered through requests. And yeah. so when he got drafted, like I was like. I've t- spoken to him a few times. I was like, yeah, like you're like the kindest athlete I ever met because in press conferences, he would address every player by their names. I've never seen that as wow. a journalist. Like, like he'd wow. be like, if they were a bench player, they'd be like, yeah, like <laughs> that guard, Kalen Malone or blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> you know, like he would address them by their names. And so I, I told wow. him that he's like, yeah, I won't ever change. Like, and he hasn't, but that's besides the point. He, when he gets hot, like you can't guard him. He can make it from anywhere. I mean, kind of like Curry, especially for his old day. Like, I mean, like lately he's been a little bit more quiet, but like back in the, I mean, he's still going to be the like sharpest shooter in the NBA, but um, he reminds me a lot of Curry where like, it doesn't matter what's happening around him. If he wants it, he'll go get it. And I think that's what the Hawks are like this year. So I feel like maybe they won't be a crazy contender. Like, I want to say like heat over the Hawks, but I like they are more promising, but I don't know. Trey Young, I just would never really bet against him. I, I agree with you 100%. I think it's very hard to bet against somebody like that. I mean, everyone had the Sixers winning that series. I as well did. Um, it was uh, it was it was crazy that they even won that series and how far they even they made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, you know? So, yeah. I mean, hey, I guess watch out for them as well, you know? Yeah, for sure. So, so um, obviously we know we know who you have winning rookie of the year. Uh, we could talk about the we could talk about the NBA all day long. So your East pick is the Nets, uh huh, and your West pick is the Lakers. Yeah, please. I well, you have a Lakers flag in your background. But LeBron, don't judge I love if LeBron. I do say that. I I love LeBron so much. So I I really can see him getting back to the the finals again this year. I mean, all those moves they've made with Melo. I mean, I can't believe they signed Kendrick Nunn to such a cheap deal. Malik Monk to a cheap deal. Ariza and uh, Dwight Howard and Wayne Ellington, I can completely see. But Kendrick Nunn leaving the Heat for less money at such a young age to go try to win a championship with the Lakers and LeBron. I mean, hey, some, so there's, there's something we don't know that something's going on over there. It's like, wow. I mean, you know, they traded Kuzma, they traded KCP, and they traded Montrezl Harrell and two picks for, you know, Westbrook. So... I don't know. I never thought LeBron and Westbrook would be playing together. <laughs> Me either. Or, or Melo for that matter. Like that. I, I don't. Yeah. Uh, no, I, you I saw go. the I Mello, I saw, I saw the Melo thing for coming, you know, obviously Le- LeBron and Melo were always linked to play together. Obviously, you know, their history um, of uh, high school, they played against each other. College, they never got a chance to play against each other, but um, they always, you know, battled it out in the East. And when they, uh, when LeBron was in Miami and Melo was in New York, they were battling out in the Eastern conference for those few years. But then Melo kind of, he retired and he went away, then went to Portland. And uh, mm-hmm. actually before he was in Portland, he had that Hawks uh, thunder, you know, he had that whole, yeah, he was at the thunder for a second. Right. He was thunder. And then he got traded to the Hawks and then they bought him out. And then he went to Portland. Then he wore number double zero. And then now he's on the Lakers. So he's always wanted to play with LeBron. He took less money. I mean, I'm sure he could have stayed in Portland probably for, you know, one year, you know, maybe a five, ten million dollar deal, maybe. But uh, staying on Portland real quick, I want to ask you, do you think Damian Lillard will get traded or do you think he'll stay in Portland? Because he's not going to go the Knicks now. Uh, Stephen A. Smith was saying that he would have gone to the Knicks but now I don't think him going I don't see him going there with the Kemba trade or with the Kemba buyout yeah well fun fact I keep saying like random fun facts but um the Knicks are actually my my team like born into the Knicks fandom my dad mm-hmm. we're from New York originally so 
I would have loved to see Dame <laughs> at the Knicks. I adore him. And I really think that I can't see him really a lot of other places other than Portland, but right, they need right. to do something about that. They, they have let him down, you know, like I feel like they have been too reliant on him and they need to build a, if they want to keep him, they need to build a stronger team around him. I don't know what that would look like, but I, I don't know, but I can't really see him leaving, but I also would, it kind of pains me to see him stay because he's just right. got, he's gotten let down so much. He's gotten let down so much. I mean, McCollum's a great, you know, co-star, but it just feels like the wheels just keep spinning. It's, it's, it feels like a, a car is in the dirt and the tires just keep going and going and they can't get out every year. It's either first run exit, second run exit. And then a few years back, they got swept by golden state in the, uh, in the Western conference finals when Katie was even hurt. That was when Katie was on the Warriors. So it just feels like the tires just keep spinning and spinning and they're not going anywhere. They just recently yeah. fired Ter- Terry Stotts. So, I mean, they're a, they're, they're a mess. If you ask me, yeah. Mellow's not a big loss or anything, but I just feel like Lillard just getting tired of just every year. It's like, I mean, he wants to be loyal and faithful to, you know, to, uh, well, my hat, one of my hats just fell. Sorry. Uh, Por- he wants, he wants to be faithful to Portland. So, but it just doesn't seem like, you know, a whole lot is getting is, you know, going on. It reminds me of LeBron when he was in Cleveland, uh, both of, both of his times when he was there and they just didn't bring any free agents for him. Obviously yeah. they, they traded for Kevin Love, but those small market teams, you know, players don't want to play there because the owners don't want to pay these guys. It's just like, it's just how it is. You know, I mean, Cleveland, who have they gotten since LeBron has left? Nobody. I mean, they traded for Jared Allen, but you know, it's like Miami, Los Angeles, you know, Brooklyn now, New York, Milwaukee's a small market, but those big markets t- players want to play for, you know, that's why Lowry yeah. got out of Toronto, you know? So anyways, yeah. uh, we're going to wrap this up here. I got a few questions for you uh, before we, uh, before we end this uh, podcast. Uh, what is your dream job? Ooh, okay. My dream, like full out dream is to build my brand big enough where I can secure big interviews and have like a, a talk show or like interviews based solely off of because they know me and they know what my work type of thing. Okay. So um, dream job would be interviewing uh, people, but basically having your yeah, own like show. Yeah, like a talk kind of. show host. Yeah. Cause I have a talk show in Wichita, but oh, mine wow. is like to on whatever level, whatever network, even if it's my own platforms, like have my own show where I can like secure interviews. Absolutely. I, I and love wait, that. one more thing. One more thing. I've told people this yeah. because yeah. I love how you like sports and entertainment. That's also like one of my dream jobs. So maybe like we can work together, but like, yes. I love the <laughs> intersection between sports and music. So if I can somehow like do a show about like combining those, Oh, that's end game. Like Biggest it's, dream. I'm glad you brought that up because when you, when you talk to people on, you know, on a daily basis and stuff, you're like, Oh, entertainment, Oh, sports or oh, reporting is not sports, sports and, you know, music and, you know, entertainment always ties in together because those people are people that you speak to. They always have something to say about like, you know, sports, especially because it's on all the time, you know? So, yeah. but um, what, what has been your favorite sports moment so far to this date? Maybe you've experienced or you've seen on TV or just something you're like, I'll never forget oh. this moment. Oh gosh, that is, oh my gosh, that's a loaded <laughs> question. Um, Cause it's so different like over TV. So I might have to go with one um, that I've been at, but like, oh my gosh, why did I forget like every <laughs> good thing that's ever happened to me? Um, I know it's, I it's, mean, it's, like, it's, it's just a, uh, it's a, it's a kind of a loaded question. I kind of got emotional this past, not this past year, the year before when the Lakers won the same year Kobe died. Um, oh like yeah, that, that was huge to me because I love um, underlying messages and like the deeper meaning behind stories. So like, absolutely, when um, the Lakers and the Dodgers both won, um, you know, big LA teams for the same year, and Kobe, like that, just gave me chills. So like that was something I loved witnessing, and I, I loved the story behind that. Um, so yeah. that was amazing. And then like covering stuff, like I've covered like March Madness, like that's huge, and um. So definitely that, but like my favorite win in like recent days was definitely the Lakers, um, that Kobe year. Interesting. Interesting. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Oh, I would have usually said New York city, but now that I'm living here, I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, is that true? Um, I would love <laughs> to live here like with an unlimited budget. Like if I could have like a cute little penthouse, <laughs> I love New York. Um, yeah, because, of course. Like, I would love to live overseas like I love Greece I want to visit there so bad but I'm like the sports market there maybe Paris and I can work for like a huge team there but 
I've realized moving, I'm like getting deep here, but like, I'm like, holy crap, I hate being that far away from my family and from my dogs. So I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll stay in the state. So probably New York city still, but on a big, bigger budget. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, what, so I don't, I'm not sure if you're aware, but I'm a huge food guy. I love, I love, you know, trying different foods. What is your favorite restaurant or maybe, you know, some place that nobody has heard of, maybe you could just put on the map from you're from Wichita, right? Yes. Okay. So maybe there's a, there's a place in Wichita that nobody knows about that if they see this, you could have referred them there. (laughs) I will. Yeah. I will put everyone on. So my favorite place ever, it's called college Hill deli. The name is deceiving because it is, (laughs) um, a Mediterranean food place and the owner Ali sweetest guy in the world. Um, he, I don't remember where from the middle East he's from, but it's all homemade. They catered my bat mitzvah and I still go there to this day and I'd always bring new people there. Um, and he like has like a thing in my business cards in his restaurant. So, um, best food ever, like the falafel sandwich. It's like a wrap with falafel. So good. I love Mediterranean food. So college Hill deli best ever. So college Hill deli. It is. If you're from Wichita and you watch this college Hill deli, it is. Yeah. Aliyah sure. referred it. And my last question is, if you could interview anybody in the world, it can be sports, it can be entertainment, it can be anything, music, mm-hmm. who would it be? Okay, so like for sports, I would say LeBron. And I want to say that would be my answer for anyone, but I'm also a huge Drake fan. But mm-hmm. like, see, I don't know if I see that's just my fandom getting in the way. I'm not sure if you would give me the best answers, but oh, I would still have to say LeBron. Like, I adore that man. So <laughs> probably him. Hopefully it would happen one day. I hope like you never know. Fingers crossed. Right. But I would also like maybe like Mark Cuban. I Mm -hmm. I really do like his leadership and I, the fact that he's a billionaire, like how, like, and I feel like he has a lot of good insight. So I don't know, but definitely I think still LeBron trumps all of them. So for me, it would probably have to be probably like Jake Paul as weird as that sounds. Uh, The reason why is because I want to know like from his start to, to now, and he's not even completely done yet from like the mindset of, you know, YouTubing and, and all that, all those ideas that have gone into it to boxing. Now it's like, I feel like he just has so much to talk about. And now he's actually starting to do a lot of interviews. And I, I really uh, find those interesting him. Honestly, it'd either probably be like, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, Joey, you need to speak that into <laughs> existence because I'm a big believer and putting it out there. So now that you put it in like out in the universe, just keep telling people that, like, I feel like you could get them on your show in no time. So I definitely need to grow my following for sure. I've been slacking, obviously, you know, being in you know school and stuff, it's been, you know, tough, but I'm, my goal is to put an episode out a week and you never know who you'll uh, reach out to. I mean, Hey, you know, you yeah. responded to me and you never know. Right. So I want to say thank you for coming on the inquisitive mom, but podcast, um, for everyone watching this, uh, we are on Spotify. We're on Google podcasts. We are on anchor, uh, YouTube, uh, TikTok clips. We try to uh, get as many clips as we can out there. I remember I'm only one person, so I'm doing this all by myself, but Aliyah, I want to give you a round of applause for coming on the inquisitive Mamba podcast. And, uh, we loved having you on. Thank you for having me. You're amazing. And you're going to do big <laughs> things. Thank you so much. Well, uh, if you guys haven't followed Aaliyah already, uh, she does run a uh, sports. She has her own uh, show in Wichita, and I'll make sure to put all that stuff down below in the comments, and I'll put uh, everything up uh, once it's ready. Thank you again. See yeah, you guys next time. Thanks for having me.